Us. Pictures that make you want to hug your children a little tighter. Images this Memorial Day that drive home just how grateful we can all be for what America's fighting men and women fought to secure. The knowledge no American government will ever do this to its children, to our children, what the Syrian government allegedly did to this child. You'll see him right here. His name was Hamza Ali Ali Khatib, just 13 years old. He disappeared from an anti-government rally on the 29th of April. Now, Look away if you need to. These next photos get very, very hard to take. This is what he looked like when his body came home. His kneecaps had been smashed. His head was swollen. His body covered in cigarette burns. He had been emasculated. According to family accounts on Arabic news channels, Syrian government officials came to their home last Wednesday asking them to sign a waiver, accepting Hamza's body, but only if they wouldn't show the body or say anything about the circumstances of his death. They signed, but were so horrified by the condition of his body they could not keep quiet. So they consented to a video of their son's body. It later turned up on Al Jazeera. Almost all of it is so grisly, we could only show you those two frames. That set off a weekend of outrage. As activist Rezan Zaituni put it to the Washington Post, torture is usual in Syria. It's not something new or strange. What was special about Hamza is he was only 13 years old. A pro-regime television station disputes the allegations, with the doctor who did the autopsy phoning in, saying there's no evidence of torture. He says what you saw came from decomposition. Now, right here, we need to point out that we have yet to independently confirm these allegations, but bodies don't get covered in cigarette burns when they decompose. They don't lose organs. They don't show every sign the deceased, in this case, a 13-year-old boy, was brutally tortured. And again, the Assad regime, father and son, has a long, long record of brutality. According to human rights groups, more than 1,000 people have been killed and 10,000 arrested since the anti-regime protests began. Nor has the regime shown the slightest compunction about gunning down teenagers. Stop! Stop! The video shows a wounded teenager. Later frames, which are too graphic to air, show another younger boy, mortally wounded, being carried away. More evidence. Recent video of wounded children. Like so much of what comes from the region, again, we cannot independently confirm it. But a human rights activist in Holmes tells us these kids were wounded when security forces began shooting at their school bus, wounding five and killing a 12-year-old girl. And this is how the regime handles unarmed protesters of any age. And this, this is how the regime deals with clearly marked ambulances. From the beginning, Syria's dictator has blamed outsiders and terrorists for the uprising. More recently, he admitted that security forces have made mistakes in dealing with it. Well, ask yourself this. Have the people you've seen look like terrorists? Is 13-year-old Hamza Ali al-Khatib a terrorist? As for mistakes, snipers targeting an ambulance? Was that a mistake? Shooting teenagers? A mistake? Security forces opening fire on a school bus? A mistake, too? Or cold-blooded murder. It gets worse. There's word from Al Jazeera that the body of another teenager, this one, an 18-year-old who had learning disabilities, was returned to a family in Dahar last week, also bearing the marks of torture. 
So as you look at children marching in memory of Hamza al Khatib, ask yourself, how many of these kids will be marching again for the next child? And how many won't be around to march at all? Joining us now to discuss this, Arwa Dam, and she's in Beirut for us tonight. And in New York, Professor Fawad Ajami of the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies and the Hoover Institution. Arwa, I want to start with this question. The regime could have kept the body away from the family. Why give the boy's body back to his parents instead of just disposing of it? They could have, John, and we posed that question to Razan Zaytun, who is a prominent opposition activist. She's in hiding in Damascus, and she pointed out a number of things. First of all, the fact that she said that while the image of Hamza might be chilling, horrifying for many people around the world, this has in fact been the status quo in Syria, not just under the current President al-Assad, but also under his father before him for decades. The difference, she said, is that now people are actually talking about it. She also said that she firmly believes first of all that the footage that we saw that what happened to Hamza was in fact true it was not faked and that the regime deliberately releases these bodies to the families as a message the message that they're sending out being that there are absolutely no red lines for the regime it will go to any length necessary to silence the voices of dissent no matter what the age of the demonstrator and this also to give a message to anyone who would consider joining the protest that a similar fate could await them or could to await their loved ones, John. And do we know anything, Arwa? The family had to sign a sign a commitment to be quiet. Any retaliation now for going public? Well, John, we tried to get through to the family through intermediaries, and by the time we were trying to get in touch with them, we were told that they were quite simply too terrified to speak out. We did hear reports over the weekend that perhaps uh, Hamza's father and his brother had been detained. The family, it most certainly would appear to have gone into hiding with numerous reports that, yes, they had, in fact, been threatened. And this, again, has been at the status quo in Syria. This is what activists have been telling us. Most people who dare speak out, if the regime is able to track them down, they are threatened in the best cases, detained, and oftentimes tortured in the worst, and oftentimes, again, killed, as we have been seeing repeatedly. Fuad, this is horrible in any case, but especially so because it is a child, it is a teenager. Uh, in Tunisia, it was the fruit vendor who set himself on fire and became the symbol of the beginning of the Arab Spring. Could this young man now be that symbol to take the Syria demonstrations to the next level? Well, John, that's really the fundamental question. Hamza al-Khatib will go down in the history of, of, of Syrian torment and in the history of Syrian grief and in the history of Syrian sorrow. The masks have fallen in Damascus. This ruler, Bashar al-Assad, has always pretended to be a civilized man. He had studied in England. He had been reaching to the outside world. He had been pretending to be a reformer. Even some of our own statesmen, our Secretary of State Hillary Clinton once called him a reformer. Even our own President Obama, in as late as May 19, just a couple of weeks ago, in a speech said that Bashar al-Assad has a choice. He can either lead the, the, the progress toward reform or he could step out of the way. We've seen everything now. We've seen this poor child. And I think Arwa is right. You, you send the, the boy home in order to scare the Syrian people into submission because the rulers are surprised that the Syrian people are no longer afraid. And Arwa, it's very difficult because we can't get independent access to Syria, but we do see some increase in the protest since this incident. Can we have a sense, do you have any sense of your sources and reporting that perhaps we're getting to a critical mass? Well, John, if the intent of the regime was to terrorize people off of the streets, this most certainly appears to have had the opposite effect. There were a number of demonstrations over the weekend following the parents receiving Hamza's body, people out on the streets chanting that Hamza's blood will not have been spilt in vain, chanting their support. We've seen a Facebook page emerging that now has close to 60,000 members. People seemingly even more galvanized by the fact that this atrocious act did take place, or at least is alleged to have taken place. And again, as activists point out to us repeatedly, the harsher, the more brutal this regime gets, the more toughened the opposition becomes. This most certainly is a movement 
and those who are involved realize within this movement that they have no choice at this point but to carry this out until the end. And so while it might be a bit premature to say that the demonstrations have reached critical mass in the sense that they would be able to topple the regime, they most certainly do have a lot of momentum. And activists will tell you that the act of killing this child in such a brutal manner is only serving to fuel that momentum, John. And for what, if they have momentum, are they getting the help from the outside that they need? Are these brave souls getting from the West, from the United States in particular? There's been tough talk, there's been more sanctions, but is it anywhere near enough? No, no I think, John, the Syrian people are fated to fight this fight alone. And if you compare them with the Libyans, you see the differences. There was a mandate internationally to intervene in Libya. There is no mandate to intervene in Syria. The Arab League stood against Muammar al-Qaddafi. The Arab League is afraid of Bashar al-Assad. Russia came down hard eventually on Muammar al-Qaddafi, but Russia supports the, the Assad regime. Alas, unfortunately, we have to say that the Syrian regime still has assets, and the opposition, driven by the sense of outrage, has its own power behind it. So I think you're going to see the standoff, and it will continue for a while. The regime on the one side, and the people on the other, and the people are not afraid. Professor Ajami Arwa, thanks. We'll stay on top of this story. We promise you that. We will watch these heroes in the streets. Thanks for helping us tonight. Tell us what you think. We're on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at AC360.